So to start with, to try to get back on track, but we're already sort of on track, but to keep going, I need to make a few definitions. And I'm going to define what it means for an extension to be algebraic. Now, 
which one of these is the minimal polynomial for gamma? None of them. The minimal polynomial is the unique monic polynomial of smallest degree for which you're with coefficients in your base field for which f is a root. And so the, the minimal polynomial of an element in the field, this is true not only, not only for the field Q, but also for any field. If you're talking about an element that's already in your base field, it's automatically algebraic over the field because it's a root of the polynomial x minus gamma. Okay? So this is a this this part of the example here works for any field. Now, what, what are some other numbers? This is the, these, these, these numbers are trivially algebraic over the field because they're actually in the field. What, okay, so back to, back to Galois theory. Can you give me some examples of numbers that are, this is going to be really fun. Can you give me some example of numbers that are going to be algebraic over Q that are not actually in Q? Just so I can get my bearings, when you, in group strings and fields, did you talk about algebraic numbers or did you not really get that far? You didn't really get that far. Okay, so then it's not because the question is obvious, but it's because you're thinking about the answer. There's lots and lots of examples. You, you can just take any, any polynomial with coefficients in Q. This is, just look at the definition. If you take any polynomial with coefficients in Q, all of the roots are algebraic. That's the definition. That's exactly what all the algebraic numbers are. They're all the roots of polynomials with coefficients in Q. And so other examples of algebraic numbers over Q are, are things like the square root of 2, the square root of 3, etc. Cube root of 2, right? And roots. I mean, this is really boring. This is a really boring list. Because lot, there's lots of numbers that you, this is actually kind of a funny list. Because there's actually lots of, all the numbers that I can write down here without just saying a root of, and then I give you a polynomial, all the numbers that I could write down here reasonably are going to look like this. They're going to be things of this form, right? With twos and threes replaced by other numbers and other roots and then adding different ways. And You know, all of these are examples of algebraic numbers. All examples. Of numbers that are algebraic. write down in that form. And that, that's part of the point of this class, is to prove that there are, there are polynomials that have roots that are not expressible using radicals, like what we were talking about on the first day. There are polynomials from degree 5 and upwards where they have roots that are algebraic numbers, but I just can't write them down in this form by writing a rational number plus a root of another number plus another rational number. And then, what, what, but, but this at least gives you the flavor for, for what, what we mean. Taking roots to get from your base field up to a higher field is a good way to construct examples of algebraic numbers. In fact, most of the examples that we do are going to be like that. Um, I, let me also make a comment at this point, if you haven't thought about this before. Uh, if, if my base field is Q, this may not be that true if my base field is some other field, but if my base field is Q, the collection Q is a countable set, right? And so the collection of all polynomials with coefficients in Q is also a countable set. You can enumerate it. And so the collection of all algebraic numbers is also a countable set. Okay, the collection of algebraic numbers over Q. It's a countable set. But the, the collection of all real numbers is an uncountable set. So there's actually a lot more real numbers that are not algebraic. There's a lot more real numbers that are not algebraic over Q. Okay? So can, can you give me some examples of numbers that are not algebraic over Q? Can anybody give me an example? Okay. Here's some examples of numbers. Not algebraic, by the way. You usually don't say not algebraic, you usually say transcendental. So 
So not algebraic equals transcendental. Okay, that's the definition of the word transcendental. And the object here, transcendental um, equals they are transcendental. Okay, over here. Okay, somebody said E. That's a good guess. Uh, you know what? If you take your, if you if you just pick a number at random, whatever that means, like pick all the decimal digits at random, choosing each digit with e, with a equal probability of each step, you with probability one, you're going to get a transcendental number. The, the the number of algebraic numbers is much 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 less. The cardinality of a set of algebraic numbers is countable, and the cardinality of a set of all numbers is uncountable. And in fact, in the sense of um, Lebesgue measure or lots of other reasonable notions of measure on the real line, a set of algebraic numbers is a set of measure zero. The, the really funny thing is that, you know, it took a long time to actually come up with examples of numbers that we could prove are transcendental. It is true that E and pi are transcendental numbers. It's not so easy to prove that, actually. It's hard just to prove that they're irrational. It's even harder to prove that they're transcendental. Okay. But it, you, it's a proof. For those numbers, there is a proof. So here's the next definition. If you have an extension of fields, oh, I, I remember now what I wanted to do. I wanted to give you examples of more examples of minimal polynomials. Okay. The extension of fields, k over q, or k over f, I mean. Fields here. It's called algebraic. It's called an algebraic extension. If every element of K is algebraic over F. for you here. It's actually pretty easy to understand um, how to classify algebraic <laughs> extensions. Finite extensions are algebraic extensions. But there are algebraic extensions of fields that are not finite extensions. Okay? I'm going to prove it. Don't worry. I'm going to write it down in a second and prove it. Uh, okay, so let's see. I, I want to come back to my... I forgot, I forgot. I wanted to give you a more non-trivial example of minimal polynomial. So let me come back to that. This is example number two. It's problem number seven. Okay, two. And uh, it just says find the minimal polynomial. Find the minimal polynomial over Q for the number. Something. <coughs> 2 plus 3i. 2 plus 3i and c. Okay? So c over q is an extension right, of fields. c is a field that contains q as a subfield. And 2 plus 3i is a number which is in c. And so the question here is to find the minimal polynomial for, the, for this number. By the way, just writing this, just by writing this problem down, I'm already assuming that my number alpha is algebraic. Okay? Otherwise, you would never be able to find a polynomial with rational coefficients that satisfied, but this one is. How do you do this? The purpose of this example is just to is just to let you become familiar with the study of computing minimal polynomials. How do you do it? How would you do it? Let me ask you that. Have you guys done problems like this before? Where maybe if you take like math exams and stuff like that, they, I remember they used to, like competitions and stuff, they love to put problems on there like this, but in different languages. Okay, here's what I would do. If, well, first of all, this one I can already tell what the answer is, and so I would just do the, I would just write down the answer. But if I didn't know what the answer is, I would square the thing, okay? And I would say, what is alpha squared? 
Oh, okay. Four minus minus negative five, and six times two is twelve. Look at that, right? Just coil it out. And then, what's alpha? Alpha is two plus three i. And here's alpha squared. Here's alpha, and I also have the number one. I'll go ahead and write on here one equals one. Now, the thing that I'm shooting for is if um, the thing that I'm shooting to try to use is the is the fact that we were using last time, which is that it, anytime I have a a um, okay, so th this is the thing that I was trying to use. Let me just let me just explain the motivation on the sideboard here. Although this isn't this isn't really part of the solution of the problem, but let me tell you why I'm doing it this way. Even before I knew to do it this way, I would do it this way. You want to finish the problem first? Finish the problem first. Then I explain to you what the motivation, what the underlying motivation is. If you look at these numbers, if I take four times alpha and I subtract it off of alpha squared, it's going to cancel the imaginary part. Then I'm just going to be left with an, an integer or a rational number. Doesn't matter which, because. I can just subtract off some multiple of one to kill that last term, and then I have, and then I have a polynomial of degree two that alpha satisfies. So, wait, let's let's just do that. If I take alpha squared and I subtract off four four times alpha, what do I get? The imaginary parts cancel, and I get negative five minus four times two. So that's negative thirteen. Oh wait wait. Um, yes. Thank you. And so now if I, just, if I just add on a multiple of 1, which is going to be 13 times 1, I get this. And so I'm not actually done with the problem at this step. Uh, so I, I need to make a couple other words here to make the conclusion. So alpha is a root. I'm not going to claim that this is the minimal polynomial yet, even though it is pretty obvious, of the polynomial. I'm just going to claim that alpha is a root of this polynomial. f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 13. That's what we just want to show. <coughs> and now, if I know this is a monic polynomial, so that's good. If I know that this polynomial is irreducible, then I'm then I'm done. Well, that's true. I didn't prove that theorem yet. I'll prove it next. But you you can believe me that I'd be done. How, how do I know that this polynomial is irreducible? Okay, l l let me just say this way: the number the number alpha is not actually in the field Q because it's not even real, All right? It's it's an imaginary number, so it's not in the field Q, and so it can't be the root of a degree one polynomial. Let me, let me write that down. <coughs> alpha is not in Q. It's not even in, in R. And so that, that means that alpha is not the root of a degree one polynomial. Of a degree one polynomial um, in Q of X. Okay, but we already showed that there, here's a degree two polynomial, monic one, which it is the root of. Therefore, it has to be the minimal polynomial. Okay, so therefore, this polynomial that we just now came up with, this polynomial f of x, is actually equal to the minimal polynomial. And that's the end. I'm being pretty pedantic at the beginning to make sure and check everything that I need to check. I guess I owe you a theorem. It would have been nice if I proved this before, but on the other hand, it's good to see some examples first. Uh, right, so let me, prove a, let me prove a lemma. It will help the flow of logic when we're trying to find minimal polynomials. So the, the lemma is going to say, let's suppose that I have a field extension. It's an extension, it's a field extension. And let's suppose that I have an element, element alpha here, which is algebraic over f. Alpha in k. 
is algebraic over f. So then, two things that I want to convince you are true. Just to formalize everything. Number one, the minimal polynomial is irreducible over f. Not over k. Number two, if I have another polynomial which has alpha as a root, then it's got to be a multiple of the minimal polynomial. So to prove number one, so let's suppose to the contrary that f, well actually let me not state it that way, let's suppose that f factors. Suppose that f of x, f sub alpha of x, is equal to f1 of x times f2 of x. For some f1 and f2 in my ring of polynomials. Then if I just substitute an alpha to both sides of the equation. On the left hand side I get zero by the definition of the minimal polynomial. And on the right hand side I get f1 of alpha times f2 of alpha. Now, because I'm working in a field, f1 and alpha, f, f, f1 of alpha and f2 of alpha are actually elements of my field, capital F. And because I'm in a field, which is an integral domain, if two things multiply together to be zero, one of them's got to be zero. Now, remember from the definition of minimal polynomial, I took the minimal polynomial to be the monoclonal of the smallest degree, which vanishes at which vanishes at alpha. Okay? And so that, that means that that means that one of these guys has got to be a constant and the other one has to have degree equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial. You can't factor as a product of two polynomials with, with strictly smaller degree. That's by the definition of, minim, of minimal polynomial. So that, that this implies that the degree of f1 equals the degree of f alpha, or the degree of f2 equals the degree of f, top, f alpha. And this is by the choice of f alpha, by the assumption, let me say, that f alpha is the polynomial's smallest degree. is the polynomial. The smallest degree vanishing without the Smallest degree alpha hazard. Okay? And that's exactly what it means for f to be irreducible. It means that it can't be factored as a product of two polynomials with strictly smaller degree. Okay, now to, to do the other part, we're going to use our favorite crutch, which is the remainder theorem. It's very useful for problems of this shape. So to prove number two, we're trying to prove that if, if G is any other polynomial, which vanishes at alpha, then G has to actually be a multiple of F alpha. inside of my ring of polynomials, which vanishes at alpha. So 
So by the division algorithm, we have that. Uh, we can write. f of x, let me think about it for a second here, what I want to do here. Now let me write g of x. That's q of x times f of x plus r of x, where the degree of r is less than the degree of f. Oh, I meant to put f sub alpha here, f sub alpha, the minimal polynomial. Remember, we define the degree of the zero polynomial to be minus infinity, so we wouldn't have to say all the time r is zero or the degree of r is less than the degree of whatever the quotient is. Okay. Now you just evaluate the evaluate both sides of this equation at alpha. So then, on the left hand side, you get that you get you get zero because we assume that that alpha is a root of g. On the right hand side, you get q of alpha times f f alpha of alpha plus r of alpha. Well, f alpha of alpha is also zero by the definition of the minimal polynomial. And so that means that alpha r, the polynomial r, also vanishes at alpha. <coughs> now the only way that that can happen is if r is actually the identically zero polynomial. That's the only polynomial with degree less than f sub alpha which vanishes at alpha. And it's not mine, so it's not a contradiction of our definition. So this implies that r of x is the identically zero polynomial. And if you think about what that means, it means exactly that g of x is a multiple of f alpha of x. So it means that f alpha of x divides g of x. Okay. Is everybody happy with that? So the, the next lemma is also a straight, fairly straightforward one that hopefully will confirm some of your Intuition, even if you haven't brought this into your conscious mind yet. So now, now I want to say this. If I have a, a field extension, which is finite, then it's algebraic. So I'm assuming the K over F is a field extension. Now, a second ago, I let slip something that's not true. I told you this already. I'm going to tell you it again. The converse of this lemma is not true in general. Okay? There are infinite extensions of fields which are still algebraic. I can give you an example, but not yet. The, the proof of this is actually pretty easy. So just think about the definition. What does it mean for k to be an algebraic extension of f? It means that Every element of k is the rate of a polynomial with coefficients in f. I'll go ahead and write this, write this out, just in detail from the definitions. So this is the definition. k is algebraic over f, if and only if, every element of k is the root of a polynomial with coefficients in f. So all I have to do is show that every element of k is a root of polynomial with coefficients in f. Well, it's actually pretty easy because now what I can do is I can just take, so choose your favorite element of, okay, and I'll tell you why it has to be a root of polynomial with coefficients in f. I'm not going to claim that I'm going to tell you what the polynomial is because I don't know yet to tell me what. Then you have to tell me what the fields are and what alpha it is. Then I might have a chance, but okay. Look, pick your favorite guy in K, and notice. So, oh, oh, also, let's 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 write little n for the degree of the extension. Okay. <coughs> so the the degree of the extension, remember, is the dimension of K as an f vector space. So it's the n is the number of elements in any basis for K over f. So, and I'm assuming that that's finite. That's the assumption of the lemma. 
Now, if I, if I look at the set 1 alpha alpha squared out to alpha to the n, that set has n plus 1 elements in it. I'll just say it has bigger than n elements. In fact, it has n plus 1 elements. And so it has to be a linearly dependent set by the definition of dimension of a vector space. Now let's just write down what that means. So that means that there exist elements, A0 out to An, in F, not all zero, such that A0 times 1, let's write A0, plus A1 times alpha, plus A2 times alpha squared, plus dot dot dot, An times alpha to the N, is equal to zero. Okay? So we're done. Let's just wrap up the definitions here. So alpha is a root of some polynomial. Okay. Right. Alpha is the root of the polynomial f of x equals a0 plus a1x plus dot 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 a n times x to the n. This is all the coefficients of this are in the field f, and so this is a polynomial in fx. So it's algebraic. The choice of alpha is completely arbitrary, right? And so we're done. We showed that every element of k is algebraic over f, which means that k over f is an algebraic example.